If you have ever wanted to illustrate a children's book or feel a little bit artistically stagnant, then watch this lesson. Hello, it's Montmart Joe here again, and I'm so glad you could be with us for this artistic adventure. You see, this lesson was inspired by a couple of things. Number one, I was reading my son a bedtime story, as I usually do. And I have to say, I have really grown a respect for the type of illustration in children's books. It's not one style or technique per se, but it is the loose, unpretentious style that is always rich in colour. And inspiration number two is creating this style of artwork is also a fantastic cure for those who suffer from dreaded artistic block. Sometimes creating a loose, quick style of art like this without the need of creating something great can really free one up and stop that creative anxiety that holds you back. So bearing that in mind, let's create something really quick and fun and learn some fantastic techniques along the way. So let's get into it. So first I'm just taping some Montmartre watercolour paper onto a flat surface and drawing up my image onto it. There is an image on the last page of the PDF and you can find that at www.montmart.net. You don't need to put in too much information at this stage. It's just a rough guide, something to let you know where to lay your colours. Of course, use a little bit of your own creative flair. Well, my drawing is finished and I'm starting to get a little bit excited and we're ready for the next stage. And this next stage, we're going to use some art materials that most of us haven't used since childhood. We're going to use crayons. Yes, crayons. But why are we going to use crayons? Well, because these crayons are waxed base. When we lay them on the paper, they will repel the watercolour when it's laid on top, which will give us a really interesting effect. So let's apply these crayons. The Montmartre crayons are good because you get 64 colours in the set and they are separated into four packs of colour groupings. There's no rules to this but I'm using matching colour on the flower to create texture and as I do this I'm trying to get as much wax crayon on as I can. For the butterfly I'm laying the colour onto the page and these colours on top will be opposing colours. If you want a sharp end on your crayon, there is a neat little sharpener at the base of the box. So now let's lay in the background. And I'm a little bit nervous this time. For this, I'll be using watercolour. And I'm going to go for the paint and palette set. This is fantastic. You get 15 colours, a, a nice little mixing palette, uh, and you even get a brush. But I'm going to apply it with my favourite brush, the traditional Mop Squirrel. This is really versatile. You will also need some salt. Now what the salt does is, look, I'll just show you. So drop your wet brush into some ultramarine and slap it onto the background in a loose fashion. Into this ultramarine, I drop in a little phthalo and let them mix themselves on the page. This is a great way to get those happy mistakes that make watercolour so endearing. Just direct the colour into position. Now you can sprinkle salt onto the watercolour and watch as the paint changes in front of your very eyes. Just look at that crazy effect. It's magic. I now do the same with the green at the base of the painting. I'm using Veridan and Thalo Green here and I'm following the same steps as I did before. It's an unusual look that you could not create any other way. That background looks really interesting. Now let's move on to our butterfly. For the butterfly, I boldly lay in my colours. I created a dark brown and into that I lay in some crimson, then some orange to yellow and so on. I keep the colours in the same group for the sake of continuity and I try to keep the colours pure also. Into the wet paint I lay in some darks but remember 
Do not overdo it with the darks at this stage. Now I slap some colour into the flower and I'm using lots of paint to get the most from the repelling effect from those wax crayons. I'm using different reds on each petal to create more interest. You can see what an effective barrier the crayons create if you lay them on thick. This has just been so fun, quick and easy to do. And rough little studies like this are great for loosening up for more serious work. But let's keep moving in because we've got one more step. And that is to apply a black fine tip marker. And this process is sometimes called pen and ink. So we'll just be using a black pen for this. This step really emphasises the general form of the illustration. I create some more black with the tip of the brush as well. You can add real interest at this stage. That almost looks like an old woodcut. And that's so abstract when you look at it closely. Well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? And I honestly didn't know how that was going to turn out. So until next time, keep on painting.